and I will let you take your own title of speaker. Okay, thank you. It is that time of the year when we are hired a winner. I have the same exact feeling last year as the first show. Fellow Toastmasters, welcome to November. We're out of here is the title of my speech. In previous speeches, I told you about a plane that crashed in the Andes Mountains back in 1972. The people were stranded high up in the mountains. And it's been, I think, the longest running four-part speech in the history of the club because it's been going on for about six months now. But at any rate, people keep on asking me, well, what happens? And at this point, it's time to wrap things up. What finally happened? Two of the people, two of the survivors of the plane crash, walked out of where they were. And that's not to understate what they did, because they walked over a 14,000-foot peak, <clears throat> and it took them 10 days, 10 days to walk out and find, <clears throat> and find civilization. 10 whole days. Not a good idea to eat a granola bar before you're in here. And unlike Marco Rubio, um, I'll have a little segue into that. So, after 10 days of hiking across the Andes Mountains, uh, Nando Parado and Roberto Canessa finally found civilization in the form of a Chilean peasant. Roberto said, Nando, Nando, look, there's a man on a horse. A man on a horse. I think I see a man on a horse. And sure enough, they did. It was Sergio Catalan, who is in the upper part of the uh, photo there. The two survivors that walked out from the plane crash are pictured below. They didn't exactly have a high-tech means of communicating at first because they were on the opposite sides of a raging river. And Sergio took out his bandana, put a rock in it, and wrote on a piece of paper, what do you need? Because these two people on the other side of the river were furiously trying to communicate with them, and Sergio took and threw it across the river. They responded back because Sergio's ballpoint pen was in, wrapped up in the bandana also. They responded back. I come, this is the note that Nando wrote, I come from a plane that fell in the mountains. I am Uruguayan. We have been walking for 10 days. I have a friend who is injured. In the plane, there are 14 injured people. We have to get out of here quickly, and we don't know how. We don't have any food. We are weak. When are you going to come and fetch us? Please, we can't even walk. Where are we? They had actually crashed on the Argentinian side of the border, and they walked all the way over into Chile. And when they did meet up, because uh, Sergio had a, a, a little bridge that he used to cross over the river, and he went over there with his horse and got them, took them back to his cabin. And Sergio noticed that they spoke with a lexicon that he was not quite used to because they were par Paraguayan, and uh, not Paraguayan, but Uruguayan. They were Uruguayan, and their Spanish was a little bit different than what he was used to speaking. Meanwhile, another peasant went to get help, and within, within a day, a carabinier, a Chilean military policeman, came riding up on his horse. He was an overweight police when he came riding up, and he ran up to the cabin, and he had ro a rope strung over his shoulder and said, where are they? Where are they? He was all ready to rescue them and be the hero of the day. <laughs> Nando replied to them, well, if you walk up the valley here, 50 or 60 miles, you'll get to where the plane is. So at that point, the carabinier, being out of air after having run and being overweight, had a seat because he knew he was not going to be the person to rescue these people. And so it went. Up on the mountain, meanwhile, the people there, the survivors, the other 14 survivors, did have the ability to find out what was going on in the outside world because they had a transistor radio. And after a long, long time of tuning in and not hearing news and not hearing news, finally the moment had arrived. And here are the words from the book in regards to the good news on the radio that they were getting. The words once mentioned spread over the air from one country to another 
until every wavelength on the continent seemed to be carrying the sensational news that two survivors from the Uruguayan plane that had crashed in the Andes 10 weeks before had been found and that 14 still remained at the scene of the crash and the rescue was underway. Phenomenal news story. Things like that just don't happen. Next slide, please. Here is the photo of when the Chileans went with a helicopter over to where the plane was. This is as they are, were approaching the plane. These people had been there for 10 weeks, 10 full weeks. And it was suggested I not dwell on this, but there could have been just a little bit of cannibalism along the way, which was how they survived. 10 weeks up in the Andes. In Santiago, Chile, they finally all gathered as a group after the helicopter took people out, a couple of helicopter trips to get the uh, 14 people out. They gathered in uh, Santiago, Chile in, uh, for Christmas 1972. That was when the rescue took place. I think they finally got together on December 23rd, and they were in Santiago for several days. It was called El Milagro de los Andes, the miracle of the Andes, because that just doesn't happen. People don't show up 10 weeks after a plane crash. And as they went about Santiago, they were very distinguishable because they had long hair, they had beards, and they sort of walked like a duck because for 10 weeks they had not been getting exercise. There was snow all around the airplane, no chance to walk. So they were easily <laughs> distinguishable. Wherever they went in Santiago, their money was no good. They'd go to a restaurant, sit down, order a bottle of wine with their meal, and the, person, the people at the next table gave them their bottle. It was just considered a tremendous case of survival. Things like that just plain do not happen. It turns out that they had walked from the eastern edge of the Andes across the Andes Mountains to get to Chile because they thought that they were at the western edge of the Andes. That was not the case. They had walked across the entire mountain chain. The dying words of the co-pilot of the plane had been, we passed Puerto we passed Puerto leading them to believe that they were on the western part of the Andes. Had they walked to the east, they would have had to walk only three days to get out. Instead, they had a 10-day trip, including over treacherous mountains. There have been recreations of the trip by mountaineers, and they're using ice axes and whatnot to climb up these peaks that these people did just with their hands. It's a wonder they ever, ever made it. Next photo, please. On January 18th, 1973, there were a group of 15 people most of them were Andinistas, who are the mountain rescue people. They went up to the site. They built a uh, shrine with a, a cross on top. The cross is uh, right in this area here. They gathered up the bodies as best they could. They buried them under rocks. They were going to be up there for several days, but it was so dangerous. There were avalanches that were breaking the silence that they had to leave after one day. It was just too dangerous. <coughs> Mr. Toastmaster.